Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Die Chronic Heroes here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 favorite PvE heavies in Destiny 2. And of course, this list is completely subjective based on my own opinion how I use these weapons. I've also taken a look at a lot of other people's opinion online. I've done DPS tests, total ammo damage, adjusted RPM to include reload. I've done a lot for this video as well as my requisite spreadsheets to bring you what I think to be a relatively definitive list of the top 10 heavies for Destiny 2. And make sure you check out the giveaway I have going on right now. Free Astro A40 headset, blue microphone product, and a $20 gift code to Control Freaks. All you have to do is go in the description down below, find the giveaway link, and on that Gleam link, you'll be able to do a bunch of different actions like follow the Twitter, follow the Twitch, stuff like that. Pretty straightforward, and a lot of them pretty free. Some of them, you just have to visit the website. And you know what else is free? cute and fluffy animal pictures. That's right, I don't actually take all of these cute animal pictures myself. I go to this place called Google and I type in cute fluffy animals and I get all of these things and I get to put them in my videos. I mean that was a bit cringy but oh man do I love typing in cute fluffy animals into Google. In this particular iteration of my top series I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. In the past I've made these beautiful spreadsheets. I've spent like 20 plus hour creating and putting together these spreadsheets took my top five favorite of these items and then I made the video off of those five different things and it kind of created this big separation between the spreadsheet and the actual video and I found that the spreadsheet is probably the best tool that I have available so in this particular iteration I'm gonna be incorporating and integrating the spreadsheet more throughout the video instead of talking about just my top five favorite and what makes those amazing we're gonna be having a discussion about the archetypes and the meta in Destiny 2 in this particular video about PvE heavies and why certain things are near the bottom, why certain things are in the middle, and what makes certain things go from the middle to being a top tier, and what particular perks they need to have that happen. Instead of just saying, hey, these are the five favorites, you should just use these, let's give you a better idea of what it means to be a great PvE heavy. So let's go ahead and get started with the spreadsheet. You can see on the screen right now, if you haven't seen this already, I make beautiful dark theme color-coded spreadsheets even sometimes with links if you wanted to know tutorials of how to do certain ritual quests or exotic quests uh, if you wanted to know perk recommendations for all the different slots for legendary weapons or just the perk for exotic weapons you want to know how to get a catalyst where to get it how to complete it extra notes tips and tricks and of course for the pve version dps calculations probably the most useful section is going to be this DPS calculation. Now this spreadsheet is completely public. So if you wanted to use this spreadsheet is a public online Google Sheets and if you wanted to get access to that, all you have to do is head over to my Discord. On the Discord server you'll find a server channel called hashtag YouTube Twitch and around the date that this video came out on January 12th, 2020, you'll be able to find a link to this spreadsheet. But please do stick around for the rest of this video because there's a lot of good information I'm going to be telling you that you're going to find very very useful and also I spent a really long time on that spreadsheet at least give me the retention for this video <laughs> moving on let's go ahead and get started with our discussion of the weapon meta I wanted to get started here at the very bottom of the meta to discuss the worst of the worst and work our way upwards if you didn't know already this spreadsheet is organized by DPS from the top to the bottom and right now rocket launchers are the very bottom of the bunch when it comes to damage per second on top of that also the very bottom of the bunch when it comes to full ammo damage now the reason that is is obviously it has a very large blast radius so a large blast radius means you hit more enemies so you could potentially get more damage out than you could have with perhaps a sniper rifle that being said it's not often that you need that much blast radius for very many scenarios and most of the time rockets are not going to be very prevalent in the meta the best rocket in the entire game is going to be that of the Deathbringer and the Truth. Even then, their DPS is around 10 to 11,000. Total ammo damage from 140 to 170 are still very, very poor. Next up in the rankings, we have the Heavy Machine Guns with a much higher full ammo damage, better DPS, and in my opinion, better versatility. Now, obviously, they take a lot longer to get their full ammo out. The rocket launchers can dump their ammo in 15 seconds, whereas the 
uh, heavy machine guns take a full minute or more to be able to even get all of their ammo out and finish off. But that being said, they still do better DPS and they're doing it over a longer period of time, so that really shouldn't be a problem. The best heavy machine guns in the game are definitely going to be that of the Thunderlord, which actually has a pretty impressive place at number 10 on my list. Uh, at 13,000 DPS, it's around a middling amount of DPS. A total ammo damage of 440,000 is very respectable, and the reason why Thunderlord is up here is because it fires faster as you hold down the trigger, on top of the fact you're also getting extra damage from all that Thunder Lightning. So, there's a lot of things going for the Thunderlord, however, it is an exotic, meaning you cannot use Izanagis with it. Next up on the list are going to be the Swords. Now, the Swords are kind of weird, and the reason that is is because they're kind of all over the place. Uh, the light attacks for the swords do around 12,000 DPS, 450,000 total ammo damage. The heavy attacks do more DPS, but less full ammo damage, which is a good trade-off if you want to do more DPS or you want to do more total ammo damage. You have that option, which is really nice. And then all of a sudden you have this sneaky-ass light plus version doing around 20,000 DPS and 900,000 full ammo damage. Now, what is this mythical light plus version that's at number five on my list? is going to be the perk options. The specific perks that I'm referring to here are going to be Relentless Strike and Whirlwind Blade. Both of these perks up the total ammo damage and the DPS by a pretty significant amount. Moving over to Light GG, just to demonstrate these two different perks. First of all, Relentless Strike, landing three light attack hits within a short time grants sword ammo. So three hits, you get one ammo back. And of course, Whirlwind Blade. Consecutive rapid sword hit strikes increase this weapon's damage output. Both of these combine together to give you the ridiculous full ammo damage and, of course, the ridiculous amount of shot damage. Now, I realize this may not still make a lot of sense, so let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. Uh, let's take this example here for the Death's Razor Light Attack. We have a shot damage of 7,905 and a total ammo of 58. Moving up to the Death's Razor Light Plus version, we have a shot damage of 11,800 and a total ammo of 77. Now what happened here, the 77 comes from the fact that Relentless Strike gives you more ammo, so I basically added that to the total ammo, and the shot damage increases as you go along. So here's that same 7,905 number for the Light Attack, and every attack you get more damage with each hit, where the sixth hit gives you your maximum damage. Now this perk of Whirlwind times 5 sticks around for the entire time until you stop hitting enemies with light attacks and that goes through the rest of the ammo, giving you the grand total of this much shot damage. Now this is probably not going to be exactly what you experience. Obviously you're not going to be hitting the same boss 75 times in a row or 77 times in a row. However, this is going to be the upper bound when it comes to the amount of damage DPS that you're going to do with swords. And that is pretty impressive. On top of that, there's also this Black Talon with the heavy attack doing crazy DPS, but terrible full ammo damage. But this is more of an outlier, and I would honestly ignore this because it's kind of weird. In general, I think that swords need to be buffed, especially the exotic swords. You see the Black Talon, uh, you see the World, uh, World Line Zero, and then you see the other Black Talon down here. Uh, swords are dangerous, so they really need to be a lot better than they are. In Destiny 1 with Ray's Lighter, they were really powerful, but they were also really dangerous. I think Bungie needs to change how swords work. Moving on to the next item, we have the Grenade Launchers. Now, for the most part, the Grenade Launchers exist uh, in this zone from 12 to 14,000 damage, around 200,000 total ammo damage, and are not going to be DPS contenders when it comes to the top dogs. Now, this is obviously because they're easy to use. They're Grenade Launchers. They have a blast radius, meaning you can hit more than one target at a time so for the most part grenade launchers are not your dps options however there's going to be a catch the first catch here is going to be spike grenades which increase the damage of the impact of that grenade which is the smaller amount of the damage so it's not a significant amount as you can tell uh, the dps is only a little bit more than that of a non-spike grenade version and the other perk is going to be full court now this particular perk is a perk that came in a few seasons ago uh, where basically the longer the grenade travels the more damage it deals up to 25 percent more damage now if you combine a full court with a 150 RPM grenade launcher with spike grenades, you can actually come up here for the contender for the top 20 weapons, around 17,000 DPS and a 240,000 total ammo damage. Now still, these numbers are not impressive, but for grenade launchers, getting up to number 7 is pretty significant. Up next, let's talk about the linear fusion rifles. In my opinion, the most underrated weapon type for heavy weapons in the entire game, and I'm about to prove why. First up, we have the box breathing versions of these weapons, obviously doing very poor DPS, but having a very nice full ammo damage, some of the highest 
in the entire game. Uh, up next for the non-box breathing versions, better DPS, still a very respectable 500,000 DPS. Uh, after that, we have the Sleeper Simulant Queen Breaker's Bow uh, having a very respectable amount of DPS, very respectable amount of full ammo damage, and then finally, the one that just, you know, breaks the barriers, a legendary linear fusion rifle with firing line, 23,000 DPS, 550,000 full ammo damage. Now, what exactly is firing line? Firing line is a perk where this weapon deals increased precision damage when near two or more allies. Uh, now, that amount of extra damage is around 25%. So you got two buddies next to you, you do 25% more shot damage, and you're also doing a lot better DPS, a lot better full ammo damage. Uh, the way I like to think, think of it is it's basically uh, box breathing for people who have friends. And if you're doing damage, you know, to a boss in front of like a raid boss DPS, you're always going to have friends near you. So this is something that's always going to be really nice to have. And finally, the creme de la creme, the top bunch, the best PvE heavies in the entire game. Starting here at the bottom, we have the Prospector. Obviously, a grenade launcher I did mention earlier uh, has high DPS, has poor full ammo damage as compared to some of these other items, um, and is obviously an exotic, in my opinion, not worth the exotic slot. Is that a Nyan Cat? Oh my god, that is a Nyan Cat. Next, we have the Legend of Acrius, obviously with the Catalyst, giving you a larger clip size and a better reload time, having a very impressive amount of DPS, and in my opinion, a very impressive amount of damage just by a single trigger pull, uh, and a good amount of full ammo damage. The obvious problem being that not many bosses these days can actually be hit with a shotgun. Up next, we have the Darcy, which used to be the reigning champion for DPS for like five seasons in a row, but ever since the... Uh, uh, the advent of having to reload, the Whisper of the Worm is now above it with a significantly higher amount of DPS of 38,000 damage per second and even higher full ammo damage, making it the operative choice over the Darcy every single time if you have the Catalyst and if you are proccing the White Nail perk. Now that is the most important part of the Whisper of the Worm. There are three iterations on this particular spreadsheet. The Whisper of the Worm without the Catalyst and without using White Nail has a poor DPS of 17,000 and 480,000 total ammo damage. Now, if you do have Whispered Breathing, you're gonna be doing a lot more damage per shot, you're gonna have a lot more full ammo damage, and you're also gonna have more DPS because of it. Now, I have, in fact, adjusted for the fact you have to wait for Whispered Breathing. So, for example, this is 64 RPM versus this being a 72 RPM. And obviously, this adjusts because of the reload requirement here. Uh, but if you have been proccing the White Nail perk and you do have the Catalyst, your adjusted RPM is the same as your RPM, and you're going to be doing a lot more damage per second because of it. Nearly double the damage per second because you don't have to reload. And this is the game-breaking part of Whisper of the Worm, is you don't have to reload. That's the important part about it. You don't get free ammo anymore, but you don't have to reload, making the GPS much higher than everything else around it. Now here is the most game-breaking part of everything that I just said. Is the Nagis? 42,000 damage per second, 450,000 full ammo damage. What the fuck? That's not even fair. It has more DPS than a heavy weapon that doesn't need to reload. That is why, in my opinion, Izanagi is in a place that makes no sense at all. It uses special ammo, meaning you're getting like four times the amount of ammo to drop. It is the solution to majors. It is the solution to boss damage. It is the solution to which exotic you need for PvE and is a must pick pretty much every time unless you need to use Divinity. So, in my opinion, Wish with a Worm is an amazing choice. It is the best choice when it comes to heavies, but in the meta right now, Line in the Sand seems to be the better option because Izanagi's is insane. And that's gonna be pretty much it. That's the end of this video. Again, if you wanted access to this, just head over to my Discord in the channel, hashtag YouTube Twitch. Around the date that this video came out on January 12th, 2020, you find a link to this spreadsheet and this thing has everything. If you wanna know how to do a certain exotic quest, there's links to it. If you wanna know where a certain weapon came from, uh, I have it all here. What the RPM is, what the frames are. If you wanna know the, the catalyst, how to get each one of them, where to do it, how to complete it. It's all here, all the DPS, all of the sources, general notes and extra information, weapon frames, sources, everything is here. On top of that, I also have charts. If you wanna know just the, the general idea of how much better the Whisper of the Worm is compared to everything else, you now can see that in a beautiful chart. If you wanna know the total ammo damage, boys. Anarchy, kind of off the charts here, um, but obviously you you know need better DPS than that of the Anarchy. And then of course you have a kind of compared logarithmic one, which obviously doesn't look very well, but that's it. 
Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Nick Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.